Hi, and welcome to Old Time Knowledge. Well, in this video, you, you might be confused because you saw in the title that this is a review of four jars lids. But I decided to do this review because I have several quart jars that are brand new. They've never been used before. I used some of the ones that I purchased, and these were just purchased a few months ago to do some quarts of potatoes. And even though they were brand new jars, ball jars with ball lids, several of the potatoes did not seal. And I have had this problem on more than one occasion over the last year with ball canning lids. I don't know if the issue is that during the pandemic they were rushing their process and their quality control fell off. I'm not sure. Obviously, I still use ball jars. I love ball jars. I'm happy with ball jars. But even though these are brand new lids on these jars, and I've, I've, rent, I've washed them, They're, the jars are clean, and I just have them here. But I wanted to show you. I have all the, the lids and rings on these that came with them. But because of my experience in having so many of the ball lids fail, and even if it's just one or two jars per canning session, that's still a lot of food that you're not able to can properly and get stored in your pantry. So I decided I'm going to try doing this with four jars lids and I'm, I'm gonna just go all out. I have a set of four jars lids and rings, which is right here. I will tell you that in experiences I've had using four jars lids over the last several months, I have never had a jar not seal. But this time we're, we're dealing with new jars. We're dealing with a set of the four jars canning lids and bands. Granted, any bands I think would work, but I'm just going to go with the set. And I'm going to can up seven quarts of pinto beans because we go through a lot of pinto beans. We make a lot of refried beans. It's just something that we love. So um, that's, that's what I'm going to do in this video. And I'm going to bring you back. Well, I'm going to take you through the process of canning. And then at the end, I will let you know if all the jars sealed, if they have a good seal, and how they did. So stick with me, and we'll get right to it. All right, forgive the handheld video, but I'm, I'm doing this the best that I can. So the first thing I need to do is I need to get my dry beans measured out, which I've done. It's roughly one cup of dry beans to three cups of cooked beans. Since I'm going to be doing seven quarts, that means I'm going to need 28 cups of beans that are cooked because each quart holds four cups. So that said, that's going to be 28 divided by three is a little over nine. So I just went ahead and did 10 because I'd rather have too much than too little. So I have 10 cups of dry beans. I'm going to go through these. I'm going to make sure there are no rocks debris or anything like that. If there's any beans that just look bad, I'm going to get rid of those. Then I'm going to wash the beans really good until the water runs clear. All right, so after going through all of those beans, these were pretty much the only ones that I picked out. Now they don't look horrible. I thankfully didn't find any rocks. I don't really find rocks in beans anymore, but you can see some of these, they're just, well, a lot of them are split and some of them just look kind of bad. And is it the end of the world if they end up in a jar of beans? No, but I just, I mean, I figured this doesn't take very long. So why not go through and make sure that I'm getting, you know, having the very best product on my shelf in my pantry, that's what I've done. So now I'm gonna give my beans a good rinse until they, the water is clear. And you know what, when I add water to the bowl, there are inevitably going to be some beans that are gonna float up to the top I might pull those out too. Sometimes other debris will float up, like the little hulls and things like that. So I'll get rid of that, but I'll bring you back after I have rinsed the beans. Okay, I have thoroughly washed these beans and now they are ready to put in a stock pot with water and bring them up to a boil. So this is, this is just a quick soak. This is the quick soak method. You don't have to do this. If you'd rather, you can let your beans just soak overnight 
in a pot of water and then the next morning drain that water and then go from there. But this is the quick soak method. This is just how I like to do it. And so I'll bring you back once I've got the, the beans in a pot on the stove. So I brought this up to a boil. I let it boil for a minute and now I'm putting the lid on and I'm gonna leave it like this for an hour and then it'll be time to drain the water and add fresh water and boil for 30 minutes and then it'll be time to can. Okay, here's where we're at. I've soaked the beans, um, or I've rinsed the beans, I should say. I did a quick soak for an hour, drained the water, added new water, back in the pot, brought it back up to a boil, and now I'm timing it for 30 minutes, and then after 30 minutes has passed, it'll be time to can these up. All right, these beans have almost been boiling, just a simmer for 50, for not 50 minutes, for 30 minutes. That's exactly what's required in the recipe. I, I know a lot of people like to dry canned beans, but I like to follow the directions because I think they're there for a reason. So what I'm gonna do right now is since these ha are, are kind of getting close to being done, I'm gonna get those jars ready because it's gonna be time to start canning them up soon. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these ball lids off of these jars and get the four jars lids ready so that I'll be able to can these up. So I am just going to get these out of the box. I'm gonna get them washed and get them prepared and ready to get on the jars once the, the jars are full. All right, I have my, my lids and bands washed and ready. <clears throat> so you see the lovely four jars lid the pinto beans are ready, the jars are ready, so now I'm just going to fill them. And when I'm when I'm adding these to the jars, I'm going to be leaving about an inch of head space. I'm just going to debubble all of these jars and get them ready to can. And pardon my pan of refried beans here. This was from lunch. All right, those look to me like they're all at about an inch head space. Now I have to add salt to the jars. Since these are quart jars, each jar is gonna get a teaspoon of salt. All righty. Now that I have the salt in the jars, the beans in the jars, I'm going to get a paper towel with a little bit of vinegar and wipe the rims of all the jars to make sure that they are very clean before I put on the lids. I just keep some white vinegar in a, in a bottle in my kitchen. I don't want to have to be pulling out that huge jug every time. You want to do this for a couple of reasons. I know I've talked about this in my other canning videos, but just in case this is the first one you're watching, the reason why you wanna clean the rims of your jars 
it's not only to make sure there's no debris, but it's also a good opportunity for you to feel if there's any chips or nicks or anything at the tops of your jars because that can prevent a jar from sealing. All right, now that I have them all clean, I'm going to put on my lids. They say finger tight. My way of knowing when I have them tight enough is when I'm putting on a lid and I'm tightening the band and it just starts to give a little resistance as though if I keep turning, it's gonna turn the jar. For the longest time, I didn't understand exactly what finger tight meant, and over years I definitely had some jar failures because of the fact that I didn't, ha I had them too tight. You don't want them too tight. So they're all on there just barely tight enough. I haven't cranked them on, but if I turn any of them a little bit now, they still have some give, but the moment I start to turn them, it'll turn the whole jar. That's where I want them. So now let me get my canner ready, get it here on the burner, get the temperature up to hot because these jars are full of hot liquid and hot beans. And then I'm gonna add some water, I mean some vinegar to my water, get the jars in and we'll start processing. I have a 17 quart Presto pressure canner that's over 20 years old. My mom got this for me back in like 2000 and I don't even think they make 17 quarts anymore. So the closest thing to it now would be the 16 quart. This will hold seven of these quart jars and I'm going to put in three quarts of water there's a little line on the inside of my canner. Even if I held the camera, I'm afraid you wouldn't see it. But if I run my finger down in here, I can feel it. There's a little line and that will also indicate how far the water needs to go. So that's three quarts and I'm also just gonna check to make sure, yep. The water comes right up to that line. So now I just need to let this get hot and I'll get the jars in the canner. I turned this around the other way just so you can maybe see a little better as I put the jars in. I'm going to go ahead with this vinegar and just add a little splash to the water. We definitely have water with a lot of minerals in it. So the reason why I put vinegar in the water and a lot of people do when they're canning is so that their jars won't get mineral deposits all over them. It just makes them look it makes them look less cloudy and it's also it seems like it's easier to keep them clean that way. All right, it didn't take long, but the water is already hot enough that I can put these jars in. There shouldn't be any thermal shock. hot. All right, I've got the seven jars in the canner now, seven quarts. I'm going to put the lid on and I'm going to wait for the, the steam to start coming out to a steady stream of steam. And I'll explain that once I get the lid on. All right, so I have the lid on my canner. I always check first to make sure I can see light through that little hole. You wanna make sure that hole is free and clear so steam can escape. 
what I'm going to be looking for, I have the burner up on high right now. I'm going to be looking for a steady stream of steam to come out of that vent. Once that steady stream of steam starts, I'm going to start a timer for 10 minutes. I will bring you back once the steam has started. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there is definitely a steady stream of steam coming from this pot now. So I'm going to start a timer for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, I'm going to put my regulator on top and then I will explain the next step. But it's very important that you have this steady stream of steam coming out and let, it, let the pot vent for 10 minutes. What that's doing is it's making sure that the pressure is coming up in the pot and that it's going to get to where it needs to be and be able to reach the right pressure, whether you're using a dial gauge or whether you're using a rocking regulator, to can safely. So I will bring you back after 10 minutes. All right, it has been 10 minutes. It has been venting. It is now ready for me to put on my regulator. So let's talk about this for just a minute. Where I live, which is sea level, because I literally live on an island, so I am definitely at sea level, I can at 10 pounds pressure with one of these, but if I'm using the, the gauge that came with it, I would need to watch this to make sure this comes up to 11 pounds of pressure. But I bought this separately. This came separately from my, from my canner, and I absolutely love it because what's going to happen is when this gets to the correct pressure, this is going to start just gently rocking. And I think I've heard I've heard Lisa Sutton describe it as like a like a little hula dance, and that's a great way to put it. So if you don't know Lisa Sutton of Sutton's Days, you should definitely check out her channel. She is the canning expert on YouTube for sure. So anyway, I'm going to be looking for this to start gently rocking. It just so happens that I know my gauge works, so I know that once that happens, my gauge is going to show about 11 pounds pressure. This, this is a fantastic option because I don't have to rely on the fact that my gauge says 10 pounds. In fact, the, the little instructions that came with this even said, don't just ignore the gauge when you have one of these. Make sure you have it set at the correct weight. So this actually has different parts to it. If I had added another, maybe like a, another little weight that comes with, that would make it, um, I think, 15 pounds pressure. In any case, um, it, it will have options for 5 pounds, 10 pounds, or 15 pounds pressure. And so I took off one of the weights because I needed it at 10 pounds pressure. There's another weight I could remove, but I don't want to do that because that would have me at 5 pounds pressure. So once this starts to rock, I'm going to know it's at the right pressure. There's, there's no two ways about it. So once that happens, once that starts gently rocking, that's when I'm going to start timing the processing of these beans. Beans are going to process for 90 pounds in quarts. If it was pint jars, they would be processing for 75 minutes. Same time as meats. So once it gets to correct pressure, that's when I'm going to start timing it, but I'm also going to turn the heat back because I don't want to keep it at high the whole time. I just have it at high to quickly get it up to pressure. So I'll be bringing that back down. Usually I end up backing it off slowly until it's around medium on my stove. So stick with me and I will show you the next step. Okay, here we go. See that gentle rocking? I want to keep it at that or slightly less. And you see the gauge is at 12. So I'm going to cut the heat back on my stove just a little bit and continue cutting it back. But this is the point where I start timing. So I'm going to start timing now for 90 minutes. I will bring you back when this is done processing. Alrighty, I have just reached the 90 minute mark and I turned my burner off. At this point, I'm just going to leave this and let it sit. I'm not going to move it. I'm not going to take the lid off. I'm not going to do anything until the pressure comes down. And I will bring you back once they are ready to take out of the pressure can. All right. <clears throat> the the little um, thing back there, I can't, the little vent back there has gone down, which means, and this has completely come down to zero um, pounds pressure. 
I'm not going to open this just yet. I've, I've found that I have better success if I just don't rush it and just let it just chill out. So all I'm going to do now is move this over on my stove top because I have to cook supper, which is not going to take me very long, but I want to get this out of the way. So I'll bring you back once I am ready to take the lid off. It won't be too long, but it's not going to be in the next five or ten minutes or anything. Alrighty, I've got thing I've gotten things underway for supper. The the pot has just had a few minutes to rest, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the the jars out of the canner so we can see how they did. Alrighty, they look great so far. I have every reason to think that they are all going to seal. They're all bubbling away. That's usually a good sign for me, but I will bring you back once they have come down to room temperature and we know for sure whether or not they are all sealed and I will give you my report. Okay, y'all, this is, this is hilarious. No sooner had I taken my phone down from the tripod and moved it over to the kitchen table so that I could cook. I'm making some gyoza, some, some Japanese dumplings for my son for supper. Um, but no sooner had I done that, that these jars all popped. Oh, that was the last one. But all the rest of them have already popped. This is so amazing. This is so encouraging. I can definitely say that I have better success with these lids than the ball lids that I have gotten over the last couple of years. I'm not sure what's going on with those, but I can tell you that I have never had a jar with a four jars lid fail. I have done many canning, many, many canning exercises over the last few months, and I've used the wide mouth lids, and I've used the regular mouth lids. I've canned all sorts of things, but in this case, I wanted to use a batch of the jars from the same batch that I had several fail from for potatoes with ball lids earlier, and this time used the four jars lids to see how they did. They did spectacular. I cannot recommend these highly enough, and I actually have a special discount for you, which I will tell you about in just a minute. All right, so I like four jars canning lids so much that I contacted the company and asked them if they had any sort of affiliate program that I could join because I just I like the product so much and I was hoping that maybe they had a discount code or something that I could offer my viewers and they did. They set me up with a discount code OTK10 which will get you 10% off any order. Also if you order anything over $50 your shipping is free. So the package that I like the best is this one. It's the 200 count lids package. It's a great deal. It's got 100 wide mouth lids and 100 regular mouth lids. It comes to, it's like $58, and then you would get 10% off. But, again, the shipping is free because it's over $50. So, it's a fantastic deal. I hope you'll try these lids if you enjoy canning. If you've been nervous about trying something different, um, I can tell you these work. I have never had jars fail with these lids. Another thing that's important is this is a USA company. 
The lids are actually made overseas, but they are quality control checked and every batch that comes in, they check to make sure that they're working exactly as they should. I'm telling you the quality of these lids is top notch. And again, it is, a, it is an American based company. They just manufacture them elsewhere. So um, don't let that bother you because ball lids have been manufactured here and yet I'm having all kinds of failures with those. So, you know, it, it has to do with how much care is being put into the production of the product and quality control, checking it, you know, once they're done being manufactured. So hopefully this will help you out. And if you haven't tried four jars lids yet, I recommend that you try them out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.